This is the last piece in the book, and this is an opportunity to use everything you've learned to actually make some music. So we've got a blues here, we've got a 12 bar blues, and it's a minor blues. And there's a written bass line that, you know, play along to, you've got the backing track to do that to. I think it's 90 beats per minute. But we've got a few patterns that you can use, and I'm gonna show you a few ideas that you can sort of play around with. And in terms of techniques, we've learnt hammer-ons, pull-offs, vibratos, bend slides, you know, how to hold the bass, hand shifts, the whole lot. So, you know, you may have some things that you like to do more than others, and, and that's to do with your creativity and your 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 taste and your your tonal signature. You know? So do what you what your creativity leads you towards. So we've got um, one pattern in particular, or two really, that I want to show you. We've got the, the G minor pentatonic scale, and you add one note into that, you get a blues scale. So we've got the, across the whole fretboard here. I'm just gonna take the first shape. And then on each chord, you can play the same pattern, because they're all minor chords, you can just take one pattern or, or a few patterns and move them around. So here is the one I've got from the book. It's a minor pentatonic scale. So learn that pattern. Within the pattern, you have the first, flat third, fifth, and flat seventh, and that spells out a minor seventh arpeggio. So that arpeggio, and or the minor pentatonic, that will work brilliantly over each of these chords. So we have the G on the third fret of the E string, the C is on the third fret of the A string, and if you shift across, you know, using a hand shift, you've got the fifth fret of the A string, that's D. And that's just one way you can play this. So we have the bass line that's, you know, what did I do there? Did a hammer on. This is using that exact minor pentatonic shape, and I'm on the G minor chord here. A hammer on at the top, and then just alternate plucking all the way down to the root again. You can play that second note of the notated example here. A little word about the feel. We're in 12 8, so it's one, two, three, four, da, 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 da. you've got this lovely shuffled blues feel. So make sure you're tapping your foot and feeling three subdivisions per beat. One, two, three, one, two, three. And you can start to use the notes of the scale and, and in fact the broader, back to that G blues scale. You can start to use these to create music and to use these these techniques. So let me just play and as I go I'll, I'll stop and show you what I'm doing. So there, I'm taking that G minor pentatonic shape. I'm bringing it to life a bit by using some of these techniques. So this is something I like to do and I've discovered this from just transcribing so many players. So I couldn't tell you exactly where I found this from but You'll hear this a lot in, in bass playing. I'm just doing a slide from the third to the fifth fret using my third finger. Third finger because then my first is in position to play the third fret of the D string. With experience, you'll learn these little tricks. So there's plenty in the book that demonstrate this exact thing. You can take the notes and rearrange the order of them. It's a bit of rolling there and raking. It's a bit of fast plucking there. Let's move to the C chord. C minor chord, sorry. There's a bass line. So I'm on the C now. I'm on the third fret of the A string. Got that little rhythm from the first to the second notes of that minor pentatonic shape. I've forgotten what I did, but I'll make it I'll make something up and keep it the same. There, that's good. So then the first pattern. And then I'm barring my finger to play on the sort of crease there. You could you could jump quickly to move it. 
two options there. I'm doing a hammer on. There's a hammer on from fret three to five. And then a rake from fret three of the G string to fret five of the D string. Let's do the same thing on the G. It's a good exercise, this, because the three chords involved in this piece of music are the same. They're all minors. And that's why you can do the same thing over each of them and it'll sound good. Your overall key is G minor. So that's why you can use your, your G minor blues scale. I'll use the same bass line. So there. I wanted to do a fill, so if you use the overall key of G minor, then you've got the, the blues scale. And I just slid out from fret five to seven. Slide back again. There's adding that blues note in. Right there, what did I do? I'm on fret three now of the A string. If you do a hammer on down onto the, the blues note, which is on the fourth fret of the same string. And then I'm just doing an immediate pull off. And then I'm raking onto the sixth fret of the E string. Now this is, I'm making all of this up as I go. So it's, sometimes it's a little awkward to make something up and then transfer that. But um, hopefully you will come up with these ideas as easily as I'm doing. Things to look out for. I'm very aware of the beats here and the rhythms. Now the meter is 12.8, so it's a little bit of an awkward one. It's not 4.4, four, it's 12.8, so you've got these da 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 I know, so... You have to be aware of the rhythm. If you if you ally the rhythm with some interesting techniques, you start to get good bass lines. It has to be all played in time, which is why you've got a backing track. And I've talked about metronomes a lot so that you can you can really it starts with the inner clock, you know, so you understand what 12 eight is. You're subdividing the beats each time. And then when you bring in a drummer or a real drummer or a drum loop or a metronome at home, then you can start to really integrate these ideas and play them bang in time and and use some of these techniques to make it sound good. Let's do a little bit more. Got those first two notes again. The third fret to the sixth fret of the E string. I'm on the G minor chord. Two hammer-ons on the third to fifth fret of the A and then the D. I'm alternating my fingers each time. And then I return to the fifth fret A string with a little rake. What about exploring some of the upper reaches of the neck? Just these shapes of the, of the G minor blues scale. I really recommend that you learn those. And then you can just maybe forget the bass line and just, just improvise using that. Don't worry too much if the timing suffers a little bit, but... I'm just moving in and out of these shapes. You can, you can view them as box shapes. They move along, or you can view them as we're going across a string, two strings. There's so many different ways of looking at this. So I'm in this shape here. Little slide from the 10th to the 12th fret of the D string. Very similar to my idea down there I showed you earlier. And slide back from 12 to 10. And in that position, I can play the eighth fret, give it a little bit of vibrato. There's that same idea, hammer on, pull off. Anywhere where you're at a half step lower than that blues note, you can do a little bend. So you can actually use the backing track and you can improvise around just the shapes of this G minor blues scale 
and do a solo. <laughs> Add in some vibrato, do just alternate plucking, then experiment with some more legato. That's your hammer-ons, your pull-offs, your bends, your slides. And ultimately what you want to do is you want to be able to call up any of the techniques you've learnt in this book just at the click of a finger. And you do that obviously by integrating them sort of within yourself by practicing. So hopefully that will give you real... Um, direct knowledge about what to practice you know you've got to do your alternate plucking you've got to make sure you know how to bend you know how to slide you know how to hand shift you know how to do all those things then you can practice using that over this backing track and some of the other things that you've learned in the book i hope that helped and if you do have any questions feel free to drop me a line dan at onlinebasecourses.com cheers <laughs>